Hey, everyone. Hey, Brendan. Hey, Barrett. All right, let's give a few moments for everyone to join. Uh, I'm going to paste in the meeting link. Just put your name in down for attendance. And uh, if anyone can help scribe today, that would be great. Um, today's agenda is we have a presentation on Chekhov, which is going to be done by Barack. All right, we're going to wait a couple more minutes so that people can slowly trickle in since Zoom has some joining issues sometimes. Uh, while we're waiting, is there anything that uh, anyone would like to bring up? Uh, we already have, we have one thing on the agenda next week, which is to talk about, um, what was this? The DevSecOps pipeline reference by Vinay. Uh, do we have anyone else that would like to put items on next, week, next week's agenda? All right, we're still waiting for um, one or two scribes to help out today. So if you can help scribe a little bit, um, that would be great. All right, let's start with um, just kind of going around with updates. Um, I see most don't have updates. Uh, Justin, comment, do you have something that you wanted to talk about? Um, no. Yep, okay. And Cameron? Sorry, no updates. Okay, all right, cool. Um, I noticed that we have several new names at least that I haven't seen before. Um, if any, if you're new, um, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, hey, sure. Yeah, I'll go first. Um, I just started joining these meetings. I'm Trishan Kupsami. Uh, I work with uh, some CNCF projects such as Tuff in Toto and CNAB, and uh, I'm a security engineer at Datadog. Pleasure to join all of you. Well, thank you, Sean. All right, thanks, Ray uh, and Ash. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so I just had a quick update on the uh, OPA project. So OPA is looking to graduate and uh, we'll be formally applying for graduation in the next few weeks. Uh, so if you all have any questions or concerns, uh, please let me know. And I think that's pretty much my update. Thanks. Just security questions or can we ask other things about OPA? 
Oh, anything is fine. Like, uh, if you have any OPA questions or want to know about OPA, you can con connect offline no. or anything else specific to um, graduation. Um, no, we're using it. Uh, we're planning on using it in a pipeline. I'm um, at the large financial institution where I am, and um, I think the question that's been coming up for us is management of the policies and uh, like at scale. Okay. And is there any discussion? I didn't investigate too much on the website, but is there any discussion about how you generate context, i.e. with the integration of a graphing database backend? Um, is that, does that make sense what I'm talking about? Uh, so yeah, I think there are two separate questions, one around policy management itself at scale, the other around uh, integrations with the graphing database. Is that mm -hmm. fair? Yeah, the graphing database, in, in other words, to provide context. I didn't. I don't know if if those questions have come up before, both of those. Uh, so yeah, the first one definitely has come up like many times around like scale and bundle distribution, around policy distribution. And we have few mechanisms for that, uh, a feature called bundles. I think we can chat after this call on Slack. Right. Offline oh, about, okay. I sure. can provide you more details on that. Um, and regarding the graphing database, uh, is something like Grafana or something? Uh, is that what you had in mind, or uh, uh, um, Neo Four J? I mean, anything, but something that would provide, like, as you're doing the validation. I think um, OPA gets closer, but I, I what concerns me is the absence of context to some degree, and maybe I'm missing that, but I don't see that right now. Maybe I'm just not. Maybe it's documented, and I'm just not. Grokking it. Uh, why don't I reach out to you on Slack after the call? Uh, are, are you on the Six Security Slack channel? Uh -huh. Yeah. Awesome. So I, I'll reach out to you. I'll ping you after the call. Oh, okay. Thanks. All right. Cool. And also, um, OPA has done a, a security self um, assessment as well. So if you haven't already seen that, um, you can get that in the um, Six security GitHub. I'll paste the link in the in the meeting notes. Thanks, Brendan. All right. Um, all right. If not, I think let's go ahead with today's presentation. So we're gonna have um, Barack and Guy, uh, who are gonna talk about uh, Checkoff, which is a static analysis tool for infrastructure as code. So, um, are you guys all set? Yeah, thank you, Brenda, and thank you for setting this up. Uh, let me just share my screen. Uh, I'll be sh uh, showing uh, those stuff uh, alone today. So my name is Barak Shoster. I am the CTO and co-founder of a cloud security startup named BridgeTrue. And we have various open source tools. Among them is the check of open source that we would like to discuss about uh, today and present it. Um, so a little bit of context. So Chekhov was originally developed at Bridgecrew. Uh, it was released at uh, last Christmas under the Apache 2 license. Um, it is currently maintained only by three employees and it covers configuration frameworks like cloud formation, Kubernetes, serverless, and ARM uh, with more than 360 uh, security policies written. So Chekhov is a static analysis tool for those infrastructure code frameworks or configuration manifests. Um, and we would be happy to add Chekhov into the CNCS foundation. So what's Chekhov? Um, originally we built it because we looked for an internal tool uh, to enforce policies over our Terraform code within Bridge Group. And we saw like a lot of open source tools at the time, uh, but not all of them had the content, meaning the rules. For some reason, um, it, was, it was like great engines, but the content, the, rule, the rules themselves that are usually common in a lot of organizations, either based on the CIS benchmarks um, SOC 2, PCI best practices, the AWS foundation, or, or the GCP and Azure. Um, and what we decided to do is just to write a bunch of, uh, uh, we wrote at, at the beginning 50 checks that uh, validates different configurations. 
and we open sourced it and some people contributed more and some people joined and contributed even more. And the basic principles of it is that we want to just uh, open source all of the common context, all of the common rules uh, to the community. Uh, the engine obviously is also open source. Everything in Chekhov is open source. And we were more familiar with our security background. We were more familiar with Python uh, as a programming language. And we found it very easy to extend, uh, to use inheritance, to do API calls in, in some of the cases. Uh, so this is the language uh, that we chose to build in uh, a check. So how does a check look like? Um, over here, there is an example for a Terraform policy to enforce encryption over RDS resources. Um, so it's uh, like, I don't know, a lot, uh, something like 10 lines of code for a check. Uh, you mentioned the resource that you'd like uh, to monitor, the AWS DB. You give the check a name and an ID and a category. And basically what you will do is to take the parameter in the, in the configuration of that resource and you will enforce whether it is, uh, you will check whether it is configured correctly, uh, meaning with storage encrypted uh, equals true. And then the check is passing. If it does not have storage encryption or is encrypted with, uh, is uh, configured with storage encrypted false, the check will fail. And what Chekhov will do is basically run like, just like a test suite in your CI CD pipeline, on your peer commit hooks, or, or in other use cases that we will see in a, in a following slide. And we'll validate all of your infrastructure code against all of those 300 and growing checks. So some, some interesting statistics of stuff that we've done with, with Chekhov is we decided to scan the Terraform registry, like the public registry, registry.terraform.io, which is almost, it's a, something like 3,000 models and providers. Um, at the time we made the scan, it was uh, 2,500. And what we found that by those 360 checks, um, 44% of those modules published at the Terraform registry were misconfigured, meaning had either encryption issues, uh, logging issues, IAM issues. Um, and, and that's a lot because uh, we also took some metrics about the downloads of those and they had uh, several millions of downloads, meaning several millions of potentially provisioned resources um, that were, that the manifest were downloaded from the Terraform registry and had some kind of a security issue. Um, uh, and those are the percentage, like uh, logging is a common missing piece in the uh, Terraform registry modules, uh, backup and recovery, encryption, Kubernetes issues, because it's hard to configure Kubernetes correctly, uh, networking, some minor IAM issues. And, and it, it's, it's not because people re re have written the code in Terraform, it's actually helping to identify and solve some of the issues at scale. Uh, it's because they, they lack the knowledge of how to configure it correctly or lack just the, the tool with all of the content. So you can have, you can have a, an engine that to write a, a rules in, but without the content and the rules, it's really lacking. So we really wanted to give a, as high as possible coverage to all of those different categories. Um, common examples would be the open S3 bucket issues that are uh, highly famous, but also encryption issues, but also did you, did you remember to turn on access logs or VPC flow logs, etc. All right, so how do you install Chekhov? It's, it's really simple. Uh, Chekhov is a pip uh, uh, Python package, so you can just pip install Chekhov uh, on Python 3.7 and up. Uh, you can, if you're using a Mac, you can use Brew. Uh, if you'd like, you can use Docker. Um, so you can basically install it uh, on, on every modern environment. As for running it, it's also pretty simple. Uh, you just need to choose a directory where your infrastructure code is in, uh, infrastructure code is in, uh, where your Terraform, Kubernetes, CloudFormation, serverless, or ARM templates are and you will just get a full colorful report in CLI 
as a beginning. Um, with each check, its ID, whether it's passed or not, and the lines that are problematic, and if it's problematic uh, resource, just a print of those lines that you should uh, probably fix or, or choose to skip or ignore. Uh, it also has um, a JUnit XML rich format, JSON format, GitHub markdown where you can put the table of the issues. And using JUnit XML, if you integrate that into uh, build pipelines like code build or Jenkins, you can get the full colorful report uh, of the JUnit XML like you can get from, from a unit test or a test suite uh, on your CI pipeline. So if you'd like to take a look on those 300 checks uh, of different resources, you can just go into the website, into Chekhov.io, scans, resource scans, and it gives you the full list um, divided by the different frameworks and different resources. Uh, some might look similar. For example, the check for encryption in cloud formation and the check of, a, of an S3 bucket and the check of encryption in Terraform of S3 bucket will have the same name, but they have different implementations because you're writing your resource in a different manner in this configuration file. Um, so like every test suite uh, where you can, uh, for in Java, for example, you can choose to JUnit ignore a specific test. Um, you can use annotations of comments uh, and write check of skip and the check ID and there isn't just for documentation, it's not mandatory. And you can choose to skip a check over a specific bucket. Um, a sample use case would be if you have an S3 bucket that has uh, public ACL configured and it's publicly accessible from the, the entire world. Uh, in some cases, it's a legitimate act. For example, if the S3 bucket is serving as a public static content host, even though there are other ways to do that, it is a possibility. So the bucket is public and it's legitimately public and you can tag it by one by just writing this comment inside your, your Terraform code and you can choose um, uh, to skip this resource from this public uh, S3 bucket check. You can also skip a full category of checks um, if you'd like. For example, if you don't want to enforce uh, encryption for some reason, or if you don't want to um, enforce putting description on every security group, you can ju just choose a check and skip the whole category without editing each and every resource, uh, just as another parameter of your CLI. So Chekhov has four basic execution mo modes. One is the local, meaning running on CLI on your terminal on your laptop. Another one is a pre-commit hook. Another one is CI/CD pipeline. And the fourth is inside a Kubernetes cluster. And we're going to drill down each one of those to see uh, the use case and how, how that can be, how that can help actually to reduce the amount of misconfigs in the cloud. All right, so let's start with a pre-commit hook. Um, as an engineer, when I'm writing code, I'd like to get feedback as fast as possible um, on how good my code is. So we generally use uh, linters like tflint TF or cfnlint or, or linters for Kubernetes or even for our node code. Uh, so Chekhov can interact just as another linter where you can configure it in your pre-commit hook and it will block you from committing um, either bad Terraform code or malicious, or, or if you, uh, by mistake, uh, have forgotten a specific security configuration on your code, you can just run Chekhov as a pre-commit hook. It's important to say that you can also do other use cases with Chekhov other than security. Uh, backup and recovery uh, can always be tested using Chekhov. You can even write custom policies over uh, permitting only specific types of EC2 instances to reduce uh, cost. But the main uh, policies that you'll find there are around, um, are around security. There are some around cost, like uh, don't forget to put retention over your logs. All right, so using the pre-commit hook, every engineer in the organization 
would not, would not be able to commit a new infrastructure code without approval or rejection of Chekhov. After an approval, meaning Chekhov has scanned this uh, local code, um, you, can com you can push the code into the, your Git repository, GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket. So that's one scenario. Another scenario is just putting it inside your CI CD pipeline. So let's, uh, let's say that I, I don't have a pre-commit hook, uh, but I have opened the pull request in GitHub or GitLab, and now I want to run my tests. So your CI system, whether it is GitHub Action, Jenkins, Drone, or, or anything else, can run Chekhov on every pull request. And it's just running the infrastructure security tests. If it rejects, it fails the build, um, you cannot do the change to your infrastructure code. If it approves, um, you can start your deployment trigger and just apply your infrastructure code into your production environment. Well, I know the drawing is focused on AWS, but it is, it is the same for every cloud. Since Terraform is multi-cloud and Chekhov is scanning configurations across the all three main cloud providers. So by implementing this kind of pipeline, you prevent any change to your production environment that is not validated, um, at least in, in some aspects of security configuration issues. The third mode is uh, running Chekhov inside a Kubernetes cluster. So since Chekhov can analyze Kubernetes manifests, it can scan those on, 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 uh, on build time while you're writing the code. But in some cases, you will use um, templating frameworks for Kubernetes clusters like Helm, uh, Customize, um, Rancher, or any, or GitLab provided Kubernetes uh, automatic, automatic DevOps. And you'd like to know if your runtime environment, meaning your provisioned uh, Kubernetes cluster, has the right configuration. So you can just deploy Chekhov as another, uh, another container in your cluster um, with a specific uh, configuration uh, YAML. And Chekhov will actually do API calls to Kubernetes to the cluster that is deployed within. Um, and we'll check if the Kubernetes, and we'll download locally the Kubernetes YAMLs and we'll uh, check if they are validate, valid or not valid uh, from security perspective. So the main advantages of using Chekhov, with, which is a policy as code engine, is using a version control policy engine where you can um, add custom policies if you'd like. Uh, you can run the, the best practices that the community provides. It can be peer reviewed. Um, since it's written in Python, it's very easy to use inheritance or do custom stuff like API calls. Uh, one of the stuff that uh, we're doing internally with it with a custom check is every time there is a deployment uh, to production, we're running a check whether there is one that is currently happening or not. And this is just another check uh, implemented uh, as part of the, of the CI CD pipeline. Um, and it, it's very easily integrated into the different um, CI tools. Uh, another Another uh, advantage of using such tool compared to into a runtime analysis, for example, tool, a tool that uh, samples a configuration uh, in, a, in AWS or, or others, is that it's, not, it's decentralized. It's not centralized in the security team where you need to go over a bunch of alerts and um, correlate the, to the user that made the change. Since it's running on each and every commit and each and every pull request, it's distributed by design because it's part of the CI CD pipeline. So if a user done commit and the commit fail, you will see that on GitHub. Um, any questions before going to the project's roadmap? All right. So uh, the roadmap contains those current items and we're open to, to add more um, is the first is policy sharing. So currently, Chekhov um, has 360 
built-in policies. It has the ability to load additional policies from an additional directory, uh, just as a parameter. But um, a lot of community members ask for the ability to load uh, policies from a GitHub repository, meaning a directory that is uh, version control, and, it, and that is lo not located near the infrastructure code repository itself. Um, so this will enable enterprises just to have a centralized Git repository where custom policies are. Um, another one is we do support scanning ARM templates, but we don't have a lot of content there, a lot of policies written. So we are working on adding more policies there. Uh, we want to support natively Helm. Um, we want to add a rela relationship engine. For example, um, in Terraform, uh, managing VPCs and VPC flow logs, those are two different resources. Uh, we would like to be able uh, to write a policy such as does each VPC that has a public facing resource has a VPC flow log. So this is a relationship engine or a graph engine that we would like to add. Um, we would like to add kubectl plugin and Kubernetes uh, admission controller just to have um, another way to interact and, and um, with the Kubernetes cluster configuration and uh, be part of the pipeline of managing it. As for the project statistics, so uh, it was released uh, six months ago. Um, it has uh, half a million downloads, 976 uh, GitHub stars, 32 contributors, 250 pull requests, and uh, the test coverage are about, are almost 90, uh, 86%. Um, uh, you can, you're more than invited to join the, the Slack um, or visit the GitHub project and try it out or the homepage of the documentation website. All right, questions? All right, thanks so much. I, I think that's a couple questions in the in the chat if you want to start looking through them. Yeah, sure. I'll take a look. Um, the, hi, this is Michelle. You answered the question about the admission controller in one of the slides. Um, if you don't mind me just jumping in. But um, the challenge that uh, I keep having, and, and I see this everywhere, is um, once you get to a, the issue of scale, you have problems with context um, and ontology. And um, flat rules don't, at some point, it's going to hit a wall because it doesn't have that context. Um, what, what are you thinking about for that? Yeah. So. Well, what we've seen like with, from running that on, on large organizations, so the, the organizations that are using it are members, teams inside AWS, teams inside GCP, uh, Salesforce, I know that they've executed some of those. Um, uh, so what we heard from those is that a lot, like 80% of the common issues can be caught using flat rules. So you let's say that you have a lot of engineers in your organization and all of them or a bunch of them are writing Terraform code and you don't want to review every pull request, you get like the 80% of the issues which are forgetting to put encryption or forgetting a public resource um, as part of this open source tool. Um, and we would like to add a graph uh, ability or the relationship engine that can give you the ability to write uh, policies with more context. So for example, activate a specific policy only on public resource, public facing resources, which means a correlation between security group rule, um, the, and the EC2, the security group rule, security group, and the EC2 that is attached to it. Yeah, so essentially you're saying create more of an engine. Right now it's not really that, you can't really, I mean, I don't wanna be offensive, but you can't really call it so much of an engine, but so you're saying create an engine that you can create you, it can have an idea of context. Is that what you're saying so, through, or relationship engine is what you're calling it, right? Yeah, that, so currently we have an engine for flat rules and the content uh, over those infrastructures code. And we would like to have our, um, an engine over relationship rules, that's right. Um, yeah, sure. 
Uh, hey, a quick question, Barak. Great presentation, by the way. Uh, so uh, how, how, I have two questions. One is, uh, if I need to update the rules, I need to encode them in Python. Is that is that accurate? If I want to add more rules or more policies? So there are two options. One is to always run uh, pip install mi minus u and get the updates to the community um, rules automatically just by updating or, or pulling the latest Docker. That, that's also uh, an option. Mm -hmm. And if you'd like to add another rule, that would be a rule in Python. Yeah. Okay. So the way to add custom rules is by writing them in Python. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, and have you uh, compared this with uh, the conf test project by any chance? Is there any like comparison or do they complement each other? So I was not aware of conf test uh, when I started uh, Chekhov. Uh, I was aware of OPA. Uh, and I know that conf test is somewhere related to OPA. Mm -hmm. So I, and I see that there is in, a chat, in the chat uh, a question about OPA. Um, all right. So OPA, as far as I know, and feel free to correct me, to use OPA, you'll need to have uh, the plan generated of your Terraform, for example, uh, which means that OPA will be able to uh, run tests over the rendered variables um, inside or the evaluated variables inside uh, the manifest. And Chekhov is, has some logic to evaluate all of the variables by the default values without applying the plan. Why we wanted to develop it that way? Because in a lot of times when developing on your endpoint, you don't want to put secrets of production environment, which are usually variables or, or somewhat injected into the plan um, on those endpoints. Um, so both ConfTest and OPA, as far as, far as I know, requires those um, variables or, or plan files. And since we wanted to execute Chekhov everywhere, we couldn't rely on those. Um, so I think that those two tools are completing each other, where you have OPA for, you have Chekhov for plain, plain manifests and the relationships between those. Um, the engine does a variable evaluation and not only flat rules. So there is a relationship graph between variable dependencies and resources. There is just not one yet for between resources. Um, yeah, so, so they are completing where OPA does the more runtime-like uh, analysis or almost dynamic because it relies on, on the production values and Chekhov is more like a static analyzer uh, of manifests. Yeah, so the comparison not between OPA and Chekhov, but between specifically ConfTest and uh, Chekhov, because I think ConfTest is for uh, managing configuration files, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not certain about the uh, Terraform use case in particular, but I think the purpose of ConfTest is to like validate uh, configuration files, like you know, you shift left basically. That's that's the idea with ConfTest. So I was just curious if it's specifically versus ConfTest and Chekhov, not OPA. OPA is completely different. Uh, um, thanks, thanks for your answer. Yeah. yeah, sure. So ConfTest, as far as I know, does not have, so I know that there are repositories with bundles. We tried to create one main uh, repository with a huge bundle of, of checks of best practices. Okay. Uh, but I think that basically it has very similar capabilities. of Terraform's upgrading and formatting and dynamicism uh, with regards to uh, with regards to like you know doing uh, for, for loops and, and counts uh, modules uh, is, is that something that is currently handled by Chekhov? So uh, I'm sorry I haven't heard you well so I'm going to repeat the question just to, to verify I heard the one the right one. The question is whether Chekhov can run on internal modules, like modules that Terraform. No, it, sorry, uh, sorry, I just switched my speaker mic. Hopefully, that's better. But the yeah. the Terraform language HCL has a lot of dynamicism. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, doing 
uh, for loops and conditionals and, and, and a lot of that to actually write a policy, you need to actually evaluate all of that to be able to check and attribute. And uh, even like the Python HCL2 parser doesn't even get like operator precedence correct. So it's a little unclear to me how robust uh, that is outside of using the Go library for Terraform. So Chekhov has uh, some Python classes for, called evaluation that handles some of those use cases. Uh, for example, importing a variable between uh, bet inside a resource or, and it has some traversing logic over modules. Um, so some use cases are already covered within the engine, but not all, not all of those. So it's basically we are using the Python HCL to uh, to parse the file, and then we have additional logic to traverse over files and um, correlation between resources and variables. Um, there is still work to be do to make it perfect. Does that answer? Well, I hope it is. Uh, it, it did. I, I think like in actually using the HCL library, it was clear that it, it's not correct in all cases. And so that's why I was just wondering about, uh, have you done validation against sort of uh, more common community modules of Terraform just to validate that, uh, that Chekhov is correct? So uh, we are we have compared that to TFSEC, which is written in Go, and we got um, very similar results um, when running on common vulnerable by design uh, projects like uh, Cloud Goat, um, Terra Goat, and Kubernetes Goat. Um, so um, sorry, Kubernetes Goat is not versus TFSEC, but uh, we have uh, validated uh, using those projects. Well, thanks. All right, cool. So, um, any more questions? Um, I guess that um, I, well, I would love to know how can it, the process of uh, submitting Chekhov into the CNCF can would probably look like from here. Yeah, so you mentioned to me that you guys are looking at incubation, right? Yeah. So, um, <coughs> so from our side, uh, I think what we can do is to do a security assessment as part of that process. Um, so uh, I will create a, if you go to issue, you can create a security assessment there. And there's a couple of um, steps you have to follow. Uh, but at least from CNCF um, six security side, uh, our recommendation is uh, incubation and graduation is based on um, kind of doing the uh, security assessment and the results from that. So I have a question here um, because you all have the uh, application in for the sandbox process, correct? So sorry, we, we can submit either to sandbox or, or to incubation. You, you have already submitted for sandbox. Yeah, I haven't gotten a reply yet. Right. Um, so the uh, the next time that we are planning on being able to review is going to be July 14th. That will be next week. Right. Cool. So uh, I, I was I was curious about like the uh, if you were actually looking for a sandbox or if you were looking to be able to come in as incubation. Got it. Um, what, what would be the main difference between the two? Um, the incubation process is the one that kind of the uh, I think it was Brandon was talking about as far as being able to go through the um, assessment. There's a uh, security review that would be involved here, as well as being able to find a TOC sponsor to do due diligence. And um, Justin Cormack can correct me if I am speaking out of turn for any of that. The sandbox process is the process that we've just changed that requires TOC to review, and um, it's just a simple vote. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Cool. 
Uh, I see Kapil's comment over the integration with Bridgeco, so um, on the chat. So it's a non-mandatory parameter. Um, yeah, but just so in terms of going to CNCF and having a hard-coded implementation to your corporate product, uh, that seems a little odd. Got it. Um, so it's an integration whether you choose to integrate that with uh, the commercial offering or not. Um, it's a choice of the user. Most of the users are not. So coming back to the question, um, so are you looking to just submit for sandbox or, or incubation or is it something that uh, you know you, you guys have to just take a look at and decide first? I'll have, I'll have to take a look and decide first. Okay, all right. Then um, I mean, whatever fits, I think that the natural progression is usually sandbox and incubation. Um, and then for sandbox, it's, you, the security assessment isn't required, but you know, nothing's stopping you from doing it. Um, and that's something that we recommend anyway, because you know, when you try and go to its uh, incubation, um, that is required anyway. But yeah. Right. Cool. cool. Yeah, I think Sandbox is going to be, you know, the, the, the right place to start here. And, uh, um, you know, you have Sandbox, incubation, and then graduating. And by starting out uh, at Sandbox, you're going to get more orientation. Um, by participating, getting a security assessment, you're going to have the opportunity to um, you know, really you know, expand your exposure to uh, folks in the, the CNCF. You're, you're, you're basically you know, going to be going around flipping bits and getting buy-in from folks in the community. So the more you can be uh, visible, the more that uh, um, you know, folks throughout the uh, ecosystem recognize that you know, the, your contribution, the easier um, subsequent uh, stages are going to be. So, you know, I think Sandbox is the right place to start. All right, cool. Thank you. Okay. Um, thanks so much for, for the presentation. That was, that was good. Um, is there any other topics that you'd like to bring about today? If not, um, we can call this um, 15 minutes early. I thought we should have Michelle talk about that ontology she's building. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like a it sounds like a topic that can For real. <laughs> is really open ended though. <laughs> I yeah, feel like sure. we could spend like an hour on this. Seriously, do people want me to really ask about that more? <laughs> <laughs> I love a good ontology. Yeah, I, for me, it's a struggle, right? I, it's a, I mean, in a way, it's kind of a graphing problem. And I, because when you don't have context, I mean, the flat rules in themselves, um, out of context, don't always mean something. It's just a problem that I had personally had. <clears throat> it's a problem at scale, right? So that you can eliminate, so you can make sure that you're you're not generating a lot of noise, false positives. The same as you have with SAST, and I mean, you could consider it like a similar problem to a contextualized uh, or temporal risk scoring. Um, I don't know. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, the ontology forum occurs at the same time as this meeting, so we probably will never solve this. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like an easier problem to solve than the actual problem itself. So. Put under the hat. All right. Uh, if not, um, next week we're gonna Vinay is gonna be going through kind of a DevSecOps um, reference. And this is kind of tying into the work that we talked about with the 
uh, DOD recommendations for CNCF and uh, that's kind of like a vendor perspective on it. So that's something that Vinny is going to present next week. And, you know, of course, we can reserve the rest of the time to talk about ontology. <laughs> if not, uh, I think okay. that's it for today. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Barack. Thank you. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Brock.